I'm Jessica Perez. And I'm Megan Gutenberg, and you're watching CTTV. Bringing you stories from the trail. Our first story of the day takes place off Cherokee Trail Campus in Southeast Aurora. The newly opened Recreational Center has created an opportunity for local residents to exercise and be active in their community. Trail media journalists Jack Josidis and Aiden Leckie talked to members and employees to uncover the positive impacts of the new rec center. The grand opening of the Aurora Southeast Recreational Center and Fieldhouse on Tuesday, January 17th has given the surrounding community and its residents a new place to exercise and socialize. This new center provides a place for people to get out of the house and enjoy different activities. Just work out real quick, and then play some soccer, swim, whatnot. The basketball courts are really fun, so is the field house. They're super popular and that's definitely the main attraction right now. The rec center has also provided many jobs to the local residents. I assist people in making accounts and buying memberships. I answer all inquiries about the building and I overall just keep the maintenance. The close accessibility of the rec center makes it a convenient spot to go to. It's close to my house and close to my school and it's really good. Many people are quick to point out the positive aspects of the center. Well, I see a lot of people I know, you know, and it's, it's a nice place, it's clean. Yes, it is very fun, and the atmosphere is very lively. Overall, this new rec center is an excellent place to better yourself both physically and mentally, and is a beneficial addition to the surrounding community. This is Jack Josidis, signing off. You know, Jess, sometimes I forget just how big CT is. Me too, Megan. With almost 3,000 students, Cherokee Trail is home to some pretty special kids, each with their own interests and talents. Among them is freshman Sophia Liley, a superstar in the art department. And junior Mason Gruby, who has a unique passion for freestyle skiing. Trail media journalists Alexis Workman and Peyton Micklick bring you more information about these two unique members of the CT community. Okay, so I'm Sophia Liley, and I am a freshman. Sophia's artwork as a freshman has already been shown in many art shows. Following her passion, Sophia has many successes ahead of her in her art journey. I have a lot of experience with art from growing up. My mom's an art teacher, and I was like always doing art around the house. Um, my dream is to be a ceramics teacher or make ceramics for a living and go to college and have that be my minor. Um, I'd say some of my paintings that I do at home with the palette knife, and since I just got into ceramics this year, um, I'm really, really liking it. One of the pieces I'm proud of is my uh, gargoyle as an art show. I think it's just a really fun activity, and there's so many ways it can be like perceived. If I see this project or painting one way, someone can see it the complete opposite, and I think that's really cool. Not only is Sophia a talented ceramicist, but according to her photography teacher, Miss Jones, she also has shown tremendous promise in her photography skills as well. So Sophia is really interesting in that she has a natural grasp of composition, especially as we got into some of the later units, she really started to blossom. And you could see, like especially in the two pictures we had for the Winter Art Show, um, where she has a natural understanding of how to make a figure stand out from the background. That was what caught my eye with these two pictures. Really, really awesome silhouette, especially with the lacrosse stick right here, that immediately tells a story without having any words to it. That's why I think that she's very unique. Our school is full of talented artists, so the next time you are walking through the halls and see the art displayed, take a moment to appreciate their creativity and hard work. This is Alexis Workman, signing off. I like to ski because it gets me away from the outside world, just keeps myself independent with nature, and I just love having a good time with my friends. Hi, I'm Mason Groovy, I'm a freestyle backcountry skier. I'd like to say Copper Mountain's my home mountain and favorite mountain. I started skiing when I was first potty train, so I was about 18 months old. My father taught me how to ski, as well as my brother, who's also a mentor for skiing. I'd like to classify myself as like an all-mountain. Sometimes I like to do backcountry, and also more of like a freestyle type of skier. Winter is my favorite ski season because I get to ski in it, and I get to do a lot of other winter sports. I think it's more of like a Colorado native thing. Like if you live in Colorado, it's more of like Kind of like a nature thing, like it's a tradition. If you live in Colorado, you should definitely try skiing. It's so fun and it's just fun to be out here and live life. Ski a couple of runs and call it a good day. What are you doing right now, Jess? I'm just checking out this really cool article about the CT signing day that happened a few weeks ago. 
Wow, I'd love to take a look at that. What's the name of the website you're on? CTHSToday.org. It is the best place to check out all the news stories created by the amazing trail media journalists. But if you want to go the extra mile to make sure to follow the trail media Instagram and TikTok. But that's just one way to stay connected around CT. We're going to hand it off to your activities with your daily announcements. Here's what's happening this week at CT. Clubs meeting after school include Cornhole and Spikeball Club, EPC, and FBLA. Congratulations, CTFBLA, for a great job at districts. Remember, we have our mandatory parent meeting for those attending state tonight in the lower lecture center at 5.30. We ask that students and guardians attend together. Also, we have our Dion's fundraiser tonight, so if you get out of sports practice late, or teachers, if you don't want to cook tonight, come support FBLA by eating dinner at Dion's from 5 to 8 tonight. Mention CTFBLA. On Thursday, join us during lunch in room 115 for the Good Soup Group. Clubs meeting after school include SASA. At 5.30, head to the upper atrium for the IB Art Show Open House. We have amazingly talented artists, so stop by and check it out. At 7 o'clock, make your way to the auditorium for the Spring Choir Concert. Admission is free. In addition to visual and performing arts, we have several home athletic events as well. Our swim team takes on Mullen at the CT Pool, our volleyball team is home against Thunder Ridge, and our soccer team plays Regis. Good luck to all of our athletes who are competing. On Friday, clubs meeting after school include Drama Club, Stop by and cheer on our girls lacrosse team when they take on Golden at Legacy Stadium at 6. This weekend, there will be a mock BC Calc exam Saturday morning. Good luck to our volleyball teams at their tournaments at Eagle Crest. Head to Stutler to cheer on our track team, and good luck to our girls soccer teams when they travel to Rampart. Next week on Monday, FCA meets before school. After school, Chess Club, Improv, NAHS, Spanish Club, and TSA will meet. Are you interested in Improv? Join us on Monday, March 13th for our next meeting. We will meet at 3.40 right after school in room 258. Talk to Mr. Tapp or Ms. Austin for more details. Please join Spanish Club to make piñatas Monday, March 13th and Thursday, March 16th. We will be in room 281 getting crafty with our piñatas. All materials will be provided. Please feel free to join us. Hasta lunes! Congratulations to the members of National Art Honor Society who will be inducted on Monday night. The ceremony starts at 6.30 in the library. Good luck to our baseball team when they travel to Arizona to compete to be the best of the West. Our girls lacrosse teams are home against Dakota Ridge. Our boys lacrosse team will take on Columbine at Trailblazer Stadium. On Tuesday, join us after school for GSA, Science Club, and Studio Art Club. Seniors, if you are interested in speaking, singing, or playing an instrument at graduation, please submit your application by the end of the day, March 14th. The application can be found on the CTHS website. Our soccer teams play Prairie View at CT, and our divers will be at Utah Pool at 6 o'clock. Good luck. Congratulations to our DECA students who competed at state. A special congratulations to all of our state finalists and national qualifiers. In addition to our national qualifiers, Sienna Marie Dahl was elected as a District 2 state officer. We earned the Gold Level School-Based Enterprise Award, the Thrive Level Membership Campaign Award, and the Thrive Level Community Service Campaign Award. Way to go, DECA! Congratulations to the members of the speech and debate team for their success at the national qualifying competition. Give a round of applause for our national qualifiers. Ava Bachhaus, Allison Cristiano, Divya Ganuthula, Sophia Johansson-Walt, Olive Ming, Yasmin Mohammed, and Anvit Sidhu. When we return from spring break, we will be celebrating Unity Week. This year's theme is Empower Change, Together We Rise. We invite you to think about ways to empower and create positive change at Cherokee Trail and in the community beyond. Be on the lookout for spirit days, lunch activities, and after-school and evening events, such as our Unified versus Staff basketball game, a movie night hosted by Sasa, and a trivia night poetry slam. If you are interested in performing in the poetry slam, please scan the QR code to sign up. Thank you. Environmental Protection Club invites you to upcycle your prom formal wear. Bring all formal wear that you no longer need to the activities office March 8th through the 28th. Beginning March 29th, donated items will be available to all CT students. That's all for today, Cougars, and remember, we are CT. Can I ask you a weird question, Megan? Yeah, but that depends on the question, Jess. Well, I just want to know what your favorite number is. That is totally not what I thought you were going to ask me, but I have to say 87. Why do you ask? Well, when student athletes choose their jersey number, they have 99 choices. So, how did they just settle on just one? Well, it was that again. David Burhan and Jake Scott interviewed different CT student athletes to uncover the story behind their jersey numbers. Hi CT, today we asked student athletes around the school what jersey number they wear and why. 
My name's Colton Gray, and I play baseball, and I wear number seven. My name's Craig Dom, I play lacrosse, and I'm number 28. My name's John Clinton, I play boys volleyball, and I wear number 13. My name is Jenna Fulmer, I play softball, and I wear number 23. My name is Bone Spoola, I play baseball, and I wear number 16. I'm Kean Lloyd, I play basketball, and I wear number 28. My name's Danny, I play soccer, and I'm number 10. I wear number seven for my dad. He used to play baseball, and he's the reason that I play, so I wear the same number as him. Uh, well, going into high school, Jack Love had my number seven, and so I just went with my older brother's number, which was 28. I wear 13 because on the first ever team I was on, uh, my coach, he gave me number 13, and he's a really inspirational person to me. Because of Michael Jordan. Because it's my favorite number. I wear number 21 because my older brother wore number 21 and uh, he's one of my big inspirations, and I just want to follow in his footsteps. That's Messi's number, and I've worn it since I was four years old when I started soccer. Good. That's all for today, Cougars. Thanks for watching. And remember, we are CT.